let's have a conversation about hormonal imbalance. Okay? So most of us tend to think that hormonal imbalances are only in women. Most percentages uh, come from women. So men are a little safe about hormonal imbalances, but unless you are obese or overweight and you have a fatty liver, which symptom? A pot belly. So now, hormonal imbalances, basically this I'll be talking to women, uh, the larger percentage of the population uh, that experiences this problem is women. However, most women tend to confuse this uh, by only thinking that this comes as a result of menstrual disorders. This is a very large topic and we cannot talk about it entirely. So we'll talk about how hormonal imbalance brings about all those conditions that, that women experience, straight from infertility to menstrual problems to polycystic ovarian syndrome and the rest. So what is hormonal imbalance? Basically, you either have more hormones or less hormones in the system. Now, what is a hormone? A hormone is basically a chemical substance that the body uses or the cell uses to communicate to other cells. So here we have a gland. Maybe the pituitary gland or any other gland, the thyroid gland that produces hormones. So the major function of these glands is to produce hormones. Okay, so this is a hormone that is produced by this gland. And this hormone is supposed to, the gland is supposed to use this hormone to communicate to a target organ. So for this case, our target organ is the is the ovaries. So we are using the pituitary gland to produce hormones or the gonad that to, to communicate to the ovaries to either aid in ovulation. So basically, hormones are supposed to uh, regulate different functions in uh, organs, starting from ovulation to sleep regulation to fat burning and metabolism as you see here, and then from wakefulness. So oh, there are so many hormones in the system, in your body, that play different roles. And today we are going to target hormones that just uh, bring imbalances in uh, uh, women's stability and homeostasis. So this is a hormone produced by this gland. And this hormone will definitely attach to this target organ through a receptor. So on this target organ, we have a receptor that basically looks exactly like the hormone so that it can receive it in. So this hormone is sent by this organ, by this uh, gland towards the target organ so that it can attach this receptor and give you an effect. So once it just touches this uh, receptor, then it can elicit an effect which is basically maybe ovulation or the menstrual cycle. Now, after that, we are not supposed to continue with the menstrual cycle or the ovulation. At some point, it has to stop. And how does this channel stop? The target organ has to send a signal back to the gland through negative feedback. Negative feedback meaning, so this is the negative feedback back to the target organ so that it stops producing the hormone. So negative feedback is just a normal way of the body, of, to tell, uh, of the body system telling the gland enough of this hormone so we don't want it anymore. We have had enough. There's another one called the positive feedback. So we have the positive and the negative feedback. The negative feedback is the important one. The positive feedback brings more harm to uh, you than help. Why? Because this one keeps telling the organ we don't have enough, so keep producing it. So the, this channel keeps going on, keeps going on, and you cannot regulate it. So we need a negative feedback to stop the production of that excess hormone so that uh, the body system goes back to normal. And that is this channel. So this is the feedback. Good. So now you've sent the hormone towards the target organ. You have induced ovulation. And then you have to now to stop uh, ovulation so that a person either gets pregnant or uh, there's a menstrual cycle. So the negative feedback is the one that tells the gland, we have had enough of those hormones. So stop producing those hormones. We now have gotten into pregnancy or a menstruation. So that is basically what I tried to illustrate here. Now, it takes a lot of time before you get to hormonal imbalance as a woman. You might think that since you just had one menstrual irregularity, uh, you just started uh, acquiring or getting to hormonal imbalance at that moment in time. No, it takes a lot of time, quite some time. And by the way, if you go to, uh, to take hormone tests, 
and your hormones in the system are stable it doesn't necessarily mean you are healthy because remember this takes a lot of time before you experience the side effects now those hormonal imbalances those menstrual pressure those are uh, uh, pains, uh, those uh, infertilities and pickles, the ones that women experience as a result of hormonal imbalances are caused by estrogen dominance. So the major hormone here is estrogen. So estrogen is a female hormone and helps play different functions as a, a, in the body of a woman. However, an excess of this estrogen is the problem in women. Now, how do we get to this excess? Basically, through diets. Now, the foods that I've mentioned here, sugar, seed oils, wheat products, uh, soy products, processed food and genetically modified foods, all of them produce fat. <clears throat> so these, organs, these uh, foods produce fat and that fat uh, is the source of estrogen. Also, some products like GMOs and soy, they have high content of estrogen and some mimic the activity of estrogen in the body. So the body recognizes them as estrogen. And that is where the problem begins because if you consume these foods, then you raise the amount of estrogen in the system and then it becomes dominant and that is where the problem starts okay so poor diets environmental changes some of you know if you change the environment uh, just before you get a menstrual cycle it might be altered drugs like uh, uh, combined oral contraceptives can also alter your hormones and again uh, things that destroy the thyroid gland they can alter your menstrual cycle and your hormones then finally the psychological uh, issues like depression and anxiety some of these will cause you hormonal imbalances however anytime you go to the hospital and they take a hormonal test and you're told that you have hormonal imbalances the doctor writes you a prescription that has combined oral contraceptives so basically hormonal contraceptives for maybe a cycle of two or three cycles now remember this combined oral contraceptives they are high in estrogen they have estrogen which is external estrogen. Now, that makes your glands to become unstable and you can even have a, a dysfunctional gland. Why? Once you start supplementing this system with an external source of uh, estrogen, then the gland starts to waver. The function of the gland. The gland now knows you have an external source of the hormone, so there's no need I produce the hormone. So it starts being inactive. And that's the side effect of this hormone because this gland does not play only the role of providing estrogen, it also plays a role of providing other hormones. So once it starts to uh, waver, then you have problems related to external source of uh, estrogen. Now again, the gland has been neglected. So you are bringing in an external source of estrogen to fix the symptoms of hormonal imbalance. But you're not fixing the cause because the cause is in the gland. Now, the only way you can fix the cause in the gland is either supplement the gland or edit your diet so that the gland goes back to functioning. Okay? But most of you go ahead and take the contraceptives for three months or three cycles and this keeps on recurring. Once the cycle, once the cycle of the drugs is over, you take some time then go back again with hormonal imbalances. And that is the reason why I'm discouraging the use of drugs in hormonal imbalance. Again, some of you experience menstrual pains that are so severe and you go ahead and use uh, uh, painkillers to, uh, to stop these menses. Remember, you're just treating the symptom. You're not managing the cause. Again, some of those uh, drugs like NSAIDs will alter your ovulation and your, your menstrual cycle because remember, it's supposed to come out as a result of the function of prostaglandins, the hormones that pump uh, the, the help in slowing off of that uh, wall. So if you continue using NSAIDs, then you are altering the prostaglandins uh, in the uterus, which means you might retain the uterus wall that is uh, already uh, dysfunctional and that can expose you to infections. So that is how it works. So if you use these contraceptives, then you're inhibiting the function of the gland and that's why you experience all those symptoms of the, uh, the side effects of those drugs like flushing and even you can end up to cancer. So that is how these drugs work. So what do we do to correct this? Now remember this, the system wants women weak and they know that women are super emotional. So they capitalize on that emotions. Now, the food industry, remember there are three systems here. We have the media, we have the food industry, and we have the big pharma. So these, all these are working against the women because women are super emotional and the mar uh, emotional marketing will lead them into buying products from the food industry. So this is the channel. 
The food industry knows you are emotional and you are attached to sugar. So it brings you all these foods. Sugar, seed oils, wheat products, processed foods, and genetically modified foods. So these come from the food industry. And guess what? The media markets this food industry. So media is the one that is involved in marketing these foods through television, through social media and stuff. And women get in, lured into this and they buy these foods. Now you consume these foods for quite some time. Then you alter your hormone synthesis because these foods will lead you to a fatty liver. And this fatty liver, the, the liver is the home of hormone synthesis, hormone synthesis. So if you have a fatty liver, then you have a problem in synthesis of these hormones. So you'll have an imbalance. So once you consume this, you get a fatty liver. You also add weight, so that means you have increased the amount of estrogen in your system. And these foods also mimic the estrogen receptors. So you get problems. Now after some time, let's say four or five years, you end up here. The disorders. So what are the disorders that happen as a result of hormone imbalance? Number one has to be infertility. So secondary infertility comes as a result of uh, an imbalance or dominance of estrogen. Number two has to be PCOS. Again, all this happen as a result of an increase and dominance of estrogen in a woman's system. So infertility, PCOS, endometriosis, fibroids, menstrual disorders, and cancer, which is breast and cervical cancer. Even the ovari ovarian cysts and also then uh, the uterine cysts all come as a result of dominance of estrogen. Now, once you've ended here, you do not have an option. The media will now start marketing you the options, okay, which are just things that come from the big pharma. So you will go back to the hospital and you're given contraceptives for three cycles, a problem. You're also given hormonal replacement therapy to help you uh, stabilize your estrogen and then other drugs, maybe uh, the ones to stabilize other, ho other hormones and also to maybe kill the pain and stuff. So remember this, the entire system is making you a slave. So you eat bad foods, you end up in these conditions, and then you go and start uh, using the drugs. So they make you a slave and they use the media to market food products, market uh, the drugs, and also they input fear in you. The media inputs fear in you through telling you the dangers of these conditions and if you don't manage them, you might end up dying. So now that fear takes you to buying uh, the drugs. And the drugs, they don't tell you side effects. Again, another culprit is the NGOs. NGOs get in here by giving you, uh, uh, they bring you oral contraceptives and HRTs, the hormonal replacement therapies, and you think they came to help. But this is basically what they don't tell you. Because these hormonal contraceptives are the major problem in our women. They will cause hormonal imbalances, they will cause cancer. These are effects that are way uh, are years ahead. So you might use them now and you think you're okay. Then years ahead you end up with uh, cervical cancer and stuff. And now you have to use more money to help you manage things that you could have handled through appropriate dieting. So now you know that the NGOs and the big pharma and the food industry are all one and the same thing. Their interest is just to milk your pockets and uh, drain your insurances. So stay warned. Now, if you want to, con uh, to, to, to get out of these hormonal imbalances, what do you do? Basically, manage the costs rather than managing the symptoms through drugs. So what do you do? This is what you focus on. Number one is the sun. Now, women, the sun is the number one endocrine stabilizer. Utilize the sun. The sun does not cause cancer. That's a myth. Go into the sun, walk into the midday sunlight. It will stabilize your hormones. So this will start disappearing. Number two, appropriate diets, which are basically healthy keto. Now, healthy keto means you just consume high protein, high animal fat, reduce all this. Remember, this cannot work if you've not reduced this. Sugar, seed oils, wheat, soy, processed carbs, and uh, GMO. You have to do away with this so that you start this therapy. So the sun, then keto diets, and uh, reduce those ones. And then sleep. Again, sleep plays a very major role in stabilization of hormones. And then sweat and salt. Salt is important for women. Take your salt. Whether raw or cooked, take your salt. Sweating means basically you go for exercise and make sure you lift the bar. Then the last one has to be no drugs. So do not, women, no, never go for hormonal contraceptives. If it's worse, then go for the copper IUCD. But do not go for hormonal contraceptives because these are the drugs that mess up our women's system. And nobody will tell you that because everything here is business. So take care of your hormones through appropriate dieting and the focus. So we'll see you in the next.